In this video, I'm going to show you how to add some more features to your text field. So these are going to include hiding the keyboard when you touch outside the text field, disabling the button until the text field has some content in it, making the text field have multi lines of text, and then also adding a controller to the form field so we can extract the text that's entered and use it elsewhere in the app. All right, let's get started. So currently when we hit the ask button here, we get our answer printing out, but we don't actually have a way to get the question here. This video, we're gonna cover how to enter a question and then also reuse that question down below. The first step to this is gonna be updating our form field here. So find where we define that, which is in the build questions form widget. And you can see we have our text field right here. We're gonna add a few new properties to this text field. Firstly, we're going to set the max lines to null. And what this is going to do is allow for multiple lines in the text field. Next, we're going to set the keyboard type to be an input, an input type of multi-line. And the reason we're doing this is so someone can enter a bit of a longer question here. It'll just allow them to type more than just the one line and it'll actually go down to the next line. Now we can add our controller here and we're going to just call this the question controller. And now we're going to need to define this controller. So up at the top of our home view state here, we can define the controller and it'll be a text editing controller. This controller is what's gonna allow us to get the value of the text field and display it down below after the button is clicked. So right now in its simplest form, we can take this controller and down below where we're calling question and answer, which is this block of text down here, you can see it says, should I, and then we just have this placeholder of these numbers of these number signs here. So instead we can go ahead and use that controller and we can call the text value on it. Now, if you save this, it won't quite have anything there, but as you type a question in and hit ask, it will now populate that down below with the question and the new answer. There is one more quick thing that we're gonna to wanna to do with this text field here, and it's really actually more noticeable when you use the actual keyboard. So if you use the keyboard here, because we made this a multi-line text, the default here is going to be a return button, which is going to allow you to return to the next line. But really, we only want that to happen if someone is typing out something that's longer. We don't really want them to be adding enters in themselves. So we would prefer this to say done because right now there's no way to actually close out this keyboard. So we're gonna do two things. We're gonna add, we're gonna set this button to be the done button to hide the keyboard. And then we're also gonna make it so you can click anywhere here to hide the keyboard. To change this return button to a done button is actually pretty easy. All we need to set is the text input action. And we're going to set it to the text input action of done. So if you reload that, you'll see now this is the done button and we can hide the keyboard. We can also get this keyboard to hide by clicking anywhere outside of the text fields by actually adding a gesture detector to this whole page. So we're gonna do that by going up to the body here and we're gonna wrap this scaffold in a new widget. And the widget we're going to be wrapping it in is a gesture detector. And then this gesture detector takes an on tapped method as well as a child. And the on taps here, we're just going to set as a one liner, the focus manager instance. And then we're gonna be looking at the primary focus because currently this form field here is focused. So when this is focused, and we're gonna check because it might not be focused, but if it is focused, then we're going to just call unfocus on that. And if you save this, now you can see if you type, if you click on the form field, it's focused. Now we have the gesture detector everywhere else on the page. So if you click anywhere outside of the form field, it will unfocus that field and go ahead and hide the keyboard for you. I think both, I think having both of these is nice because some people might want to click the done button, but it's probably more natural to actually just click outside, but that might come down to personal preference. The last thing we're going to do in this video is set this ask button to be disabled until there's actually text in the form field. 
So currently, if you click ask, it will print out this stuff down here, which doesn't really make sense because there was no actual question asked. And later, when we're actually going to be counting people's questions, we want to make sure they're not wasting a question or a decision rather on a blank question. So we're going to do this by creating a new variable, and this is just going to be a bool. And we'll just call this ask button or BTN active. And by default, we will set this to false because when the page initially loads, we won't have any text in this form field. So now that we have that variable defined, we want to go ahead and set that to true if there is any text. So within our text fields here, we can use the on changed function and this will take a value here. And that value will be the value of the text field. And then we can just call set state anytime this value is changed. And we can set the that new variable that we just defined to equal true if, and this is gonna be a bit of a shorthand here. So if the value, which is the value of the text field, if the length of it is greater than or equal to one, if this condition here is true, this is the shorthand if, then we want to set this variable here to true. And if not, then we want to set it to false. So now this should be getting set to true when the value here has a value. The last thing we need to do is actually disable this button if the value is false. So we're going to actually extract this, this set state here into a new function. And we'll put this all the way down at the bottom. And these are going to be our void functions. So this is gonna be a void function here. So the void functions here are going to be the functions that do some action, but aren't actually returning any widgets. So let's call this new function answer question, because it will be what is answering the question. And for now, we're going to simply copy this set state that we had in the in the button click and put it right here. So now we can just replace this set state with the function answer question. And if you save it, nothing really changes at this point. But what we can do now is also write another shorthand if on this on pressed here. And we can actually make this on pressed a one liner. So we can check if that ask button active is equal to true. And if that condition is true, then we are going to actually call this function here. And if it's not true, then we'll just then we'll just use null. And and what using null in this case will do is deactivate the button. We will need a comma after this instead of a semicolon because of the way we wrote this as a one-liner, but if you save this now, you'll see the button is now inactive. And then as soon as we click in here and type one character, the button becomes active. If you want to add different validation here, for instance, you want the question to be three characters long, or maybe you're working on a form field where you need some other longer string. You can see this now doesn't work until it's three characters long. So now our form is set up and validating the ask button and essentially working how we're going to want it. The next thing we can do is actually start taking this information and modeling it into a question answer object and actually saving that up to Firebase. If you aren't aware, this video is just one of a series of videos that are going to show you how to build an entire app. And the app that it's going to be building is all focused around monetization. So the parts that you're going to be able to see on YouTube for free are going to be that base app. And this is part of that. But if you want to see all the ways you can monetize a Flutter app, which include ads, in-app purchases and subscriptions, then you can check out the course. And right now at the launch of this video, you can get the course on pre-sale with a 30% discount. If you're interested in that, you can head on over to onemanstartup.com backslash monetize. If you missed the pre-sale, no worries, you can still get a discount and it will be a 15% discount. You just use the code YouTube subscriber when you are checking out. All that will be linked down below. Ciao for now.